Hi, Chuck Thomas here, and I wanted to just give a quick little uh, talk about the way the architecture of my game setup is for the data. And so I'm just to give you a brief 15-second uh, overview or 30-second, whatever. Um, I'm making a language learning game uh, that is uh, intended to help uh, study and drill uh, Japanese vocabulary and learn uh, vocabulary. Honestly, the, the goal of the game uh, was to make it for myself first, and then hopefully it can help other people uh, to make it available. Uh, but I really want to be able to watch anime without subtitles. Uh, but I also enjoy uh, learning languages, and if uh, I could put together a game that you play the game, and as you beat each boss, your uh, fluency in the language actually increases, then um, I, I think that would be a really fun and exciting uh, thing to have, and a lot of people could use it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm building it in Unity, uh, writing it all in C Sharp, but also I have to manage a lot of data with this. So it's not, you know, games have an environment, they have characters, they have graphics and all that. Um, and some gameplay, but obviously with language learning, you have a lot of uh, data, uh, such as the vocabulary. And here in Google Sheets is um, some of the Japanese vocabulary that I've loaded in. I've also, I could give another talk on that sometime of, I found it really handy to use things like Google Docs for some quick data management if you need to in games or apps, uh, because you can put it together, and uh, you can even hand this off to other people really easily. Just send them a link and say, hey, could you, uh, you know, if you have someone who's working with you to uh, manage the content, manage the data, they don't have to be getting into Unity, they don't uh, have to be doing anything else. Obviously, if this were a large game company and not just a single person developer, uh, we would have a software team that would probably be uh, working on editing tools and they would probably be building a custom app to manage this stuff. Well, I don't have that and uh, if you're watching this, chances are you don't either. So I found this to be um, a really, Google Sheets to be a really good way to manage data. Uh, there is an API that Google makes for uh, Google Sheets that allows uh, any app to uh, make requests and get the data out of the sheet and treat it kind of like a database. So I have the vocabulary data going from Google Sheets into a Node app. And then initially, um, I had this set up to where the Node app was running a little express HTTP server uh, so that my Unity game could make requests, like say it would start up and say, give me all the vocab data and it would make an HTTP REST call, uh, which would return a JSON payload of all of that data uh, from that vocabulary sheet. Uh, so the Node app is actually what takes care of translating the Google Sheets into JSON and then spinning it back out. But I've been running like that for a couple of months here, uh, and it's it's worked out pretty well. But then you know, uh, making little changes. That was I actually kind of had the code uh, ready to go from another project I was working on, so I knew how to put this together really, really quickly, which is kind of why I did it that way. But as I uh, got to thinking about it more, I, I thought, well, I don't really want it to be this way in the long run because I don't want the Unity game to have to constantly rely on this node app. I mean, it's okay to call a back-end service to save player data, refresh player data, things like that, but the vocabulary is not going to change. Uh, if, if a vocabulary needs to change uh, during the course of gameplay, that would be an application update or a patch that would go out. So, uh, what I decided to do then is that let's let's still keep it in Google Sheets to manage the vocabulary data and other data, such as uh, in the game you pick up these chests, and these chests, when you open them, have uh, vocabulary cards, uh, different words that you can unlock. And um, I thought all of this could exist in a uh, data file, a text file, inside of the Unity game. 
So I took out the HTTP REST section. Uh, it still exists actually for player data, but I then uh, changed it so that it dumped out the files to uh, JSON. And I'll show you that there. Um, and what it does, the, the Node app physically on my development system uh, sits near the same, uh, you know, on the same drive with the Unity game development. So all I have to do is run a node command, and when I start this up, it dumps all of the files such as the vocab.json into the resources, and then Unity pulls that up and runs it. So I have this export to files. Uh, first, I have this thing up here when the, the system initializes, it loads from Google Sheets. Um, and there's a whole Google API that actually gets that data. Let me actually show you that real quick. Go to Google Sheets. And here we have um, this code, this load data code, which does the calls and it uses the async await um, API to, or, or the functionalities of uh, the newer uh, I think it's an ES6 JavaScript, and um, to go and get the data. And then so it's pulling in all of the rows uh, here. Uh, this load data is actually something I wrote as a uh, an overall uh, function that just handles the, the work of going to the Google Sheets, making the connection, pulling in the data, and then you pass into it a function that says, okay, with each row of data, what do I want to do with it? So it basically pulls it out, uh, builds it into an object, and puts it in the store here. So we load uh, all the data from Google Sheets, and then it really didn't take much. I just uh, pulled in the uh, FS library, file system library, and instead of, um, you can see I still have my endpoints up here for getting the JSON data. Uh, I haven't taken those out yet because I wanted to test it out for a little bit. This is the uh, endpoint that would uh, be called to send this data.vocab. So now, instead of doing that, it's really easy. I just write out the file um, into, into a string. And then if you go over here into my game, into my game project, uh, it'll be somewhere in my development. Uh, in resources here, uh, you can see I've got the vocab uh, file, and you can see that that gets put there. So anytime I go to the Google Sheets and want to change any of this, um, all I have to do is rerun the Node app, and it will refresh this and update it, and then the game can pull it in from there. This is actually letting... Uh, just me sharing with you what's going on uh, in my game development journey. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll find it beneficial. Let me know if you do uh, in the comments, and I appreciate it. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you was uh, how my data architecture was flowing and uh, how I changed it uh, and why to be from an HTTP REST service uh, over to just dumping files into the game so that now I don't have to worry about, uh, in the game's life, uh, worry about all of the extra network traffic from uh, loading up static data that isn't going to change from time to time. Thanks.